welcome to the assimilation video lecture. Uh, we're not going to spend so much time on this video lecture in part because there's a few videos that I would like you to watch. I'm going to show you the URL on um, YouTube and then I'm going to ask you to stop this video, open up another browser window, type in that URL and watch the video. Uh, if I include the videos in this video lecture, the file size just gets to be way too large. So let's take a look at this start about assimilation. This is a Doonesbury comic strip from, oh goodness, I knew when it was from. The date is here, early 1970s. So let's take a look here. We've got Mark Slackmeyer, who is Jewish, Jewish character, although his Judaism was never really a big part of the strip. He says, I've got to cut out this business of coming home. Mark, this is his dad now. Mark, before you go, I'd like to talk to you about joining my old fraternity. Forget it. Why? The guys in it are all snobby jerks. But son, those people can help you later on in life. They'll be your best business contacts. Ugh. Mark, what's the matter with you? Why do you always reject people from your own background? It's true. All your friends are either weirdos or blacks. I'll bet you've even been dating some Jewish girl. Dad, we're Jewish. So, what we're talking about here is assimilation. We're going to talk about assimilation also, uh, actually through the entire course, but when we talk about Jewish entertainment from the 1950s, assimilation will be a big part of that. Assimilation is the idea that one culture wants to uh, basically integrate into the other culture. And for Jews, assimilation was a big goal because Jews were discriminated against and sometimes the only way to find success was to um, was to assimilate as much as possible. In fact, it got to the point where some reform synagogues in the late 19th century and early 20th century were actually holding their Shabbat services on Sunday, not Saturday. And the reason for that was not only assimilation, but it also had to do with economic assimilation. If you um, were Jewish and you observed Shabbat and you were a business person and you closed your business on Saturday, you would lose a day of business. But you would also have to be closed on Sunday because Sunday was the day of rest basically for the entire American uni uh, universe. And uh, so you couldn't lose two days of, um, of work and so Jews started just to keep their shops open, some Jews. Some communities keep the shops open on Saturdays and would take Sunday off as their day of rest. So after uh, we take a look at Doonesbury, we're now going to look at a number of videos. The first one is this. So there's the URL up top. This is a, uh, well, you know what, why don't you just stop this video, type in that URL, and when you're done watching it, you can come on back and we'll talk about this. Okay, so now you're back after having watched the video. So what's going on here is a lot of tension in interfaith families, and the assimilation issue here has to do with how do you uh, reconcile having two religions in the same uh, household. Now the assimilation aspect of this is that when you have uh, a Jewish community that is no longer segregated uh, in the sense that there is no longer um, social anti-Semitism, when quotas no longer exist at universities that limit the number of Jewish students and Jews can basically go to whatever resort they want because they are not restricted in the sense of not uh, allowing Jews to check into a particular hotel which was a uh, situation in the past. Um, when you have all of that happening and when you have Jews who are integrating into the larger society of course they're going to fall in love with people who aren't Jewish. Now for non-Jews that's typically not an issue. Uh, in part because there are a lot of non-Jews. If you're uh, Christian, typically, uh, again, I apologize for vast and irresponsible generalizations, but there are a lot of Christians out there, and for a lot of uh, Christians, the most important thing is simply that you have faith and that you uh, are connected to a religion. And so some Christian families, 
if a son or daughter marries someone who's Jewish, it won't really be a big deal for the family. However, for Jews, there aren't a lot of Jews in the world, this is an enormous deal. But assimilation rates are now, I think, above 50% among the Jewish community. So what do you do in those kinds of situations? Well, this particular video expresses the angst and, uh, and tension that can sometimes exist in, in that kind of a situation. Here's another video that we're going to watch. This is actually the video um, of Eli's first cheeseburger. This is my son, Eli. He's now, he's now actually a sophomore at the University of Houston. Um, but when he was 13, he became a bar mitzvah. Uh, you uh, should be familiar with that, certainly, hopefully, from the, um, from the introductory readings. And if you're not, you can check it out on Wikipedia, bar mitzvah, basically a 13-year-old's coming-of-age ceremony. And in our home, we felt that our kids, when they turn 13, become bar mitzvah. They are now responsible for their own religious observance and their own religious life. Uh, we keep a kosher home, but when he turned 13, Eli had the choice, if he wanted to, to eat a cheeseburger, which violates the laws, the Jewish dietary laws, which prohibit mixing of milk and meat. So why don't you take a break from the video lecture and watch Eli's first cheeseburger in another, uh, in another window on your browser. Okay, so you're back. What's interesting about it is that uh, Eli did not like the cheeseburger, and in fact, he has not eaten a cheeseburger since then. He just uh, really didn't like the taste, which was just fine for us. As an interesting after uh, thought, we have another son who's younger than Eli. He actually loves cheeseburgers, and uh, he doesn't eat them in the house, but when he goes out, uh, it's not a problem for him to eat a cheeseburger. So now... We're going to take a look at assimilation from a different perspective, and this has to do with um, this has to do with Israelis. And so, assimilation, while in the terms of our course in American Jewish culture, is certainly an American Jewish phenomenon. It's interesting that it happens from another perspective, also. So, for Israelis. Um, the issue of Israelis leaving Israel and living in other countries permanently is a big deal. And in fact, in Hebrew, the term for an Israeli who moves out of the state of Israel, that person is called a Yored. Yored means to go down. And it doesn't just mean go down in a physical sense, uh, such as Jerusalem is at a higher elevation than Tel Aviv, for example, and so you can go down. Uh, in the same sense, if you go to Jerusalem, you are, uh, you are going up in Hebrew. The word for moving to Israel to live permanently is aliyah, and that means to go up. So it's not just a physical thing, though. It's a state of being, and it is a, uh, a sense of spirituality. It's a spiritual term also. And so those Israelis, Jewish Israelis, who move out of the state of Israel to live, such as in the United States, they are called Yoredim, which means those who go down. And it's a derogatory term. And so a few years ago, the Israeli Ministry of Immigrant Absorption placed a few ads that basically were trying to encourage Israelis to move back to Israel. And so, uh, let's take a look. What is this one? This, oh right. So why don't you take a minute and watch this particular video. And now hopefully you're back after watching that video. So this one is interesting. So the little girl, of course, that's a Jewish family and they are Skyping with her grandparents who live in Israel. And uh, and the parents say, "Oh, what holiday is it? Or what are you what are you celebrating?" And she says, "Christmas." Because even if their family is entirely Jewish and they celebrate Hanukkah, when you live in the United States and you go to school, you associate this the winter time of year with Christmas. And the punctuation, the statement at the end of each of these, and there are three of them that you're going to take a look at. The statement is, "You might be Israeli." speaking to the Israelis who are now living in the United States, but will your children be? No, they won't. So that's that one. Now you can take a look at this one. So uh, now that you've taken a look at this particular video, uh, this one deals with a boyfriend who's American, 
and the girlfriend, and he might be Jewish, very well, might be Jewish, but the girlfriend is Israeli, and it's Yom HaZikaron, the uh, State of Israel's Memorial Day, basically, for all those Israelis who have died in wars, in the military. And it has great meaning for her, but he totally misunderstands it as, uh, as something very, very different. And then the last one that we're going to look at, which one is this? This one, I just need to remind myself. Oh, right. Okay, so now why don't you take a second to watch this video. And now you're back. And this video uh, is interesting because the son doesn't, a son wants to get his dad's attention, says all these things, the dad doesn't pay any attention. But then when the son says Abba, which means dad or father in Hebrew, the dad immediately perks up and, and hears that. And the sense, I think this one's probably one of the most powerful, is that the father, who's Israeli, of course, resonates with his first language initially, and uh, uh, but, you know, the kid doesn't. So, the, um, okay, so now the last thing that we're going to look at in our video lecture is, um, is Goodbye Columbus. Now, uh, I hope that you've read, or you will read, the, uh, the novella. It's not very long. Now, this, um, this, this story really angered the Jewish community. And when the movie came out in the 19, late 1960s, it made the Jewish community even more upset. So the book first came out in 1957. Uh, or his first book, I'm sorry, Philip Roth's first book came out in 1957. Um, he uh, was a very serious writer, had a very difficult relationship with the Jewish community, was kind of a rebel and politically incorrect, and he also had a love-hate relationship with America, with the country club. He writes about the beautiful shiksa. Shiksa is a derogatory term that means non-Jewish woman, particularly a non-Jewish woman who is going with or married to a Jewish man. Um, and so, uh, what happens is that this, this novel and the movie also just talk about assimilation, Jewish assimilation, in a very negative light, and particularly not just assimilation, but the idea of, um, of trying to make it in American society. And that's illustrated so much by the Potemkin family, and the father in particular, who, um, who uh, you know, finds incredible success as a plumber, uh, establishing a plumbing business, and yet he's still kind of vulgar and still kind of uneducated. If you are able to see the movie, unfortunately it's not readily available on YouTube or anything like that. The full movie is not. But if you happen to see the movie, uh, you can really see how that particular situation is expressed in the dinner scene in, uh, in their home, which is actually partly in this one right here, Meet the Parents. So why don't you take a moment to watch this particular clip. And now you're back. And this particular clip uh, is about her getting a nose job. And this is not something that is quite as prevalent today in the American Jewish community. But in the 1960s and 70s, for Jews who had a particularly large nose to get a nose job was very, very common. I'll tell you, in my family, uh, my mom has two sisters, three, uh, three sisters in that family, and my mom's two older sisters both had their noses done. My mom did not. My mom has a big bump on her nose. And uh, I have two sisters. One of my sisters had her nose done, so it wasn't so big. And my mom, I remember very clearly in high school, my mom saying to me more than one occasion, if I wanted to have my nose done, uh, there was not a problem, and, and she and my dad would pay for me to have surgery to have my nose made smaller. Uh, again, this is not something that you see in the Jewish community so much today, but it really was something back then. So there are some uh, quick things about assimilation, and I hope that not only do you read Goodbye Columbus, but you look at some of the recommended readings also. They are particularly fascinating and Finally, I want to remind you that um, I want to remind you that there is a separate discussion folder on Blackboard Learn specifically 
about uh, Goodbye Columbus. So please uh, enter your observations. Any questions that you might have, I'll respond to them. Uh, I apologize. Also, it's so much, uh, uh, so much more satisfying to be able to do these kinds of film clips in person, but uh, online classes are also a real convenient thing. So thanks very much for watching this video lecture.